Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am making eight cards with the Scent with Love stamp set by Lawn Fawn. And this is actually part two because originally I made the backgrounds for these cards in part one using these Arteza iridescent paints. I showed you 10 different ways to use that paint for card making and I made lots of different backgrounds and I'm going to use several of these in today's cards. I'm gonna mix and match some of the pieces and there are a few I didn't get to use in this video, but I have them on hand to use another time. You can see I had so much fun playing with these iridescent paints. If you missed that video, I have it linked for you in the description box below. All right, let's jump right in. I am also using today this Arteza glitter paper. There are 24 sheets in this pack, so 12 white sheets and 12 black sheets. Now, I love glitter paper, and so I really wanted to try this out. So I'm gonna use this on every single card I am using, making today, and I'll show you some different ways that you can use it. This paper is very um, heavy duty. The glitter does not rub off. It's fairly smooth. It's very sparkly, and there's 24 sheets, 12 of each. It tears out very nicely. I just really like the quality of it. I was very impressed. So let's jump in with card number one. And the background I chose to use very first is this one right here, where I took the acrylic shimmer paint and mixed it with water to create a spray. I sprayed the background with this heart in place as a mask. I'm gonna put that heart back on and bring in the scattered heart background stencils from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to attach the first one down with some tape and then bring back in one of my favorite of those paints from Arteza and use it to stencil. So what I learned in the first video, because I did stencil some backgrounds, is to have a little place you can tap off the excess ink so you have very little on your dauber like I'm doing here on the window sheet. I'm just tapping it off and also this paper is kind of warped because it got wet from being sprayed with the water so I'm really having to press it down in the areas that I am using or, or working with so that I don't you know get that seepage where the paint or the ink goes beyond the lines of the stencil. We don't want that. Okay, so there's the first layer. Now there's two stencils in this set that layer. So once that paint was dry, I brought in the second stencil. I always like to make sure the words of the stencil are facing me and are at the bottom. That way it's easiest to line up stencils that kind of need lined up. I taped this down really well because I'm going to attempt to do the pixie dust spread, I call them spreads, <laughs> it's a glaze from Lawn Fun. I, again, have to press down in the area I'm working really well so that I can make sure that glaze, that paste, the spread, <laughs> only goes in the heart and doesn't spread out underneath of it and go where I don't want it to go. So I was just really super careful. I took my time, I had patience, I had fun, and it looks super cool. So now we just need to let this dry and work on another part of the card, but it's subtle and glittery, and then we have the shimmer of the iridescent paint. Oh my goodness. And then we can peel off the mask and we have a white part left there with all this shimmer on there and layering. I love making my own backgrounds and I love adding layers to my backgrounds. Okay, this is the Scent with Love and Scent with Love add-on stamp sets from Lawn Fawn that I'll be using on all of my cards today. I'm showing you the markers that I'm using to color in the skunks. I feel like that's the most important part you'd wanna know about coloring these. So I'm starting with the T9 marker, that's my darkest and putting in my shadow. Then I'm coming in with T7 and just kind of extending that area and making the colored area or section larger. And then I'll come in with T5 and blend that out. Now, as I made so many cards, I did end up bringing in my T6 and my T4 just to get a little bit of color variation on these different skunks. For the tummy, the face, and the tail, the white parts, I used T1 and T0. You really could use any of the gray markers that you like, the tonal grays, neutral grays, warm grays, cool grays, just 
Whatever you already own is the best ones to use. I used R20 for the cheeks, the nose, and a little dot inside the ear. For the first card, I'm using this little skunk that's like running and the little scent poof that's shaped like a heart. For the sentiment, I am using my quick trimmer from Spellbinders to cut out the sentiment in a strip and I will use that sentiment on my card and I'm getting all the other things ready. So once I put this glitter paper in my paper trimmer to cut, I had to show it to you on screen because it's actually 12 and a half inches long. So an extra half inch, which I cut off to put as a layer behind my sentiment. So we just have a little bit of glitter peeking out. I love that look. I am going to flag the ends, so I'm gonna cut up the center of the strip just a little bit, and then I am cutting from the corner to the top of the snip on both sides to create a bannered look. Very easy way to create your own banners. If they're not perfect, guess what? It's totally fine. Don't stress it. All right, I had some of the temporary adhesive stuck to my card, so I used my adhesive eraser to remove that, and then it was time to glue that down to my black cardstock base, which is 11 inches by four and a fourth, scored at five and a half. I set some heavy blocks on that, and then I wanted to show you what the spray looks like. The first time I used it, I only put one drop of the paint in, and it was really light, and it created this background right here, but I saved it, and I thought this would be the perfect liner for the inside of my card. So that's what I'm doing. I, I know I'm using an excessive amount of glue there, but it was a little warped, so I wanted to make sure it laid flat. For my sentiment, I am using my double adhesive technique, some double stick tape with glue on the top, because when I stick this down, it's going to be partially on that textured background and I want it to stick really well. So next I am adding my skunk and his little scent poof I'm calling them <laughs> with some foam squares and then to top it off I'm adding some highlights with my white gel pen. So that completes card number one. I think this skunk set is so cute. I have to say when it came out I was so giddy. I thought these skunks are adorable and I don't know why I love skunks because when I smell them outside I don't like them. We used to have one in our neighborhood and we could never find it. That wasn't nice to smell in the middle of the night. Okay, background number two and card number two uses a background that was everybody's favorite or a lot of people's favorite from the first video and that's this one where I stenciled the fancy black paint on black paper. Now, um, we've set that aside, and you can see I'm coloring something here with my Copic markers. That's the white glitter paper. You can use your Copic markers to change the color of the white glitter paper so you have glitter cardstock that matches whatever color you want. All right, I'm gonna glue these things down to my card base, which is a really light lavender color. And again, this is 11 inches by four and a fourth, and then I scored it <clears throat> at five and a half to create my A2 size card. It's top folding, I love that style. Okay, I just snipped the ends of my little glitter piece at a diagonal, and then I'm gonna glue all the things down. Now the heart there is a, <clears throat> heart die from the Spellbinders Large Die of the Month. They actually have it in the Large Die, the Glimmer Hot Foil, and the Stamp Set of the Month. So you can get that heart die wherever. Again, just use whatever heart die you have when creating your Valentine cards. I added my little skunk holding a cupcake because it says, you are stinking sweet right on there. And you can see I also added black glitter paper on the side and you can see it's very sparkly and I am in love with it. And now think about this. If you bought that large paper pack, you could totally cut it, share it with a friend or two or three. All right, background number three, I made this background by just painting with the acrylic paints, little flowers, little leaves, and I created my own patterned paper. I love it. So I cut out a glitter heart from that white glitter paper, and now it's time to put all the things together. I have a pink strip of cardstock I glued down or through the center of the card, popped up my glitter heart, and then the sentiment, I just have little foam squares on the ends and then glue in the middle so it can extend across the bottom of that heart. My little skunk, I gave him a pink rose and we'll glue him right here on the right side of the heart. And then of course, I'm gonna put some of those little scent poofs 
on there and that will be the card front. Now the card base is the same size, 11 inches by four and a fourth, scored at five and a half. And then I've got a nice light green border all the way around this card. And then last but not least, white gel pen accents. It just really brings the image to life. I love the look of it. So I like this jelly roll pen and you can see there how it looks once those uh, highlights are added. Super cute. I loved creating and painting my own background. I think that's something I will do more often. All right, card number four. This is another of my favorite backgrounds, white paper using the fancy pink, which looks white on white paper until you turn it in the light. And then you can see those hearts kind of catch the light like iridescent paint does. And it looks shimmery and um, kind of has that rainbow look. So I die cut that same heart from the center of that panel and now I'm going to attach some glitter paper in black to the back of it. I added it on with glue and then just taped it down because that is some thick paper. I used some adhesive, double-sided adhesive and glue to stick that down to my top folding card base. And then I have a tiny little strip of this glitter paper, which is one of my favorite ways to use glitter paper is just a tiny little accent. And I'm gonna put that across the top and the bottom. And I know my heart background there and my little strips are a little bit bigger than my card base, so eventually I will trim that down with my paper trimmer. But let's dress up this skunk with a little bow tie and a valentine. Isn't he cute? So dapper with his little bow tie. And you could also use that as a bow like on the ear of the skunk as well. And then I just put the scent with love image, or it's a stamped sentiment. I cut it out, layered it on top of there, and his little poof of scent, Let's say for Valentine's Day that the scent poof smells like vanilla or like cherry vanilla, something not yucky. <laughs> All right, I used my markers to color my sentiment and give it a little ombre effect, kind of like I did with the glitter paper, but this is just the regular white cardstock. And I really like that look to customize your paper so it matches all the other coloring. So if you don't have the coordinating cardstock, you just make your own. All right, so that completes this card. I think this is like the most um, traditional Valentine card out of all the ones I made today. Okay, card number five, we're moving right along. I painted these backgrounds with a paintbrush, so direct to paper with the acrylic iridescent paints. I did a black piece too, but I'm only using the the white piece, the, the one I painted on white. Now on the back side of this black glitter paper, I am tracing my heart die. And then I'm going to cut that out. I, you guys, I am super fast at cutting. Check this out or I might have sped up the video greatly because I'm not. <laughs> All right, so there's the heart, and you can see now I have a nice layer for my white heart, which is the one I cut out of the stenciled panel from a previous card. I glued those two together, and this glitter cardstock does have a white core, and you could kind of see it awkwardly because it, this piece was cut by hand. So I used my 100 Copic marker. Have I ever used that before? I'm not sure. And I colored the edge of it. Then I brought out this heart die that I've had for a hundred years and never used. It was from the Spellbinder shop. I'm not sure if it's still available, but it die cut out all these small hearts. And sometimes if you use a die that is a heart that's meant to die cut out a stamped heart, it doesn't look quite like a heart. So I dug through my stash to find something that would cut out little hearts that looked like hearts. And that's what I found. So I'm gonna glue this down to the center of the card, this layered heart with hearts on it. And then I'm going to put these little hugging squirrels. And as I was making this card, I just had this strong impression on my heart and something I wanted to share with you as a Jesus follower that I am. I am called not to judge people by how they live their lives, but to show them love. And that's what this card makes me think of. And I thought I would share that with you. And I am covering up those little hearts with some glaze. I love to kind of make my own embellishments with glitter paper and then cover it with glaze. They look so 
cute. There you can see what they look like when they're dry. They, I mean, you can see the glitter in them better. At, you can see the iridescent shine of those papers and backgrounds better in person as well. Okay, I have taken this dye from Lawn Fawn that is a stitched slimline dye. It's like the medium sized one, but it's the one that's the lift the flap dye. And I die cut out this panel which was made with my gel press. I created some gel press backgrounds with this um, iridescent paint as well. And now I have a nice background for a slimline card. And then I cut a piece of the glitter paper instead of just using plain paper for the bottom of this card. Why not glitter paper? This cupcake is one that I made in the previous video where I accented a stamped image with the iridescent glitter or iridescent paint. <laughs> and it's in the frosting and again when you turn this in the light you can really see that iridescent shine so I've got it on my background and on my cupcake I added a bunch of those little skunks in and around the cupcake and I think it's such a cute scene now I wanted to mount this onto a panel of glitter cardstock but not waste the center of it so I die cut the center of it out with another of the lawn fawn stitched frames it's the large one I believe and there did you see what I pulled out something you almost never see in my videos it's called tape runner I know it exists and I pretty much know how to use it just kidding I know how to use it I just love liquid glue but sticking this kind of warped gel press panel down to glitter paper I knew I was going to need to double up the adhesive so I pulled out the tape runner and I liked it. It wasn't bad, but still liquid glue is my favorite. So there is my slimline card with the little rainbow background and this giant cupcake that the skunks are decorating and going to deliver to somebody that is so stinking sweet. All right, card number seven uses another gel press background. This one was done on black paper and I added a little texture to my gel press print. And I'll set that aside while I stamp out the word hugs from this long distance hugs stamp set. Can you see the yellowing of the stamp set? That bothers me so much. I really don't like it. But the stamp still works, so I try to let it go, but it doesn't make me happy, that's for sure. Look how nice I die cut that. I was so impressed because that was kind of a hard one to line up with that super skinny word, but Lawn Fawn made it really easy with the open spaces on that die to die cut it out. Okay, now for this strip of glitter paper, I am taking the paint and I am dyeing my glitter paper. So not only have I changed the color of the glitter, but it also now has like the iridescent shine to it. Super yummy. All right, so I'm making a mini slimline card here. So my card base itself is six by six, scored at three inches. And then I'm adding on my background and my sentiment and then my little images. So this one says sending hugs. And this card reminds me of, I don't know if you've ever had a time like this, but when you drop everything, even your Valentine's to hug someone so hard, this reminds me of, hugging your loved one who's come home from a deployment, which I have experienced those hugs a few times in my life. So I know what that feels like. And for some reason, this card reminds me of that. Maybe a loved one came home from being deployed on Valentine's Day and surprised their loved one. And that's what this card is. So there's that one. I have one more card, the eighth card to share with you. And this one uses a watercolored background where I I watered down the acrylic paints and made a watercolor wash. Now I made the rainbow one in my video, but I made this one off screen and that's the one I'm gonna use today because it kind of goes with my painted embellishments. I also am going to bring in this splattered panel where I use the paints for splatter. This is that um, pretty pink that looks white on white paper and pink on black paper. I'm going to use that to add even more splatter because my watercolor background does not have splatter and the blue one was done with blue paint so it's kind of a tone on tone and I thought it was good to add some of the pink on there. I'm gonna let that dry and it's gonna dry back so much more subtle. While it's drying, I die cut out this snowflake from a Dare to be Artsy die set. And then I also stamped and colored some mugs from that Holiday Helpers set. 
I'm going to die cut this blue splattered panel now that it's dry with a stitched slimline hill die from Lawn Fawn, and that's going to be the ground in my card. Now, this piece that I splattered in last week's video was just an odd sized scrap I had in my stash, so I actually have to trim down my uh, panel here, which is going to be an A7 size card, so it matches the size of that hill. Speaking of A7, I am making a glitter frame for this card as well, and I use the A7 dies from Trinity Stamps. They leave like a beveled, embossed edge around the rectangle, so I love those dies for A7 cards. I um, am now gluing down all the snowflakes. Now, for the wooden snowflakes embellishments, I had to put a heavy block on there to make sure they really adhered. And then the glitter ones, I just went ahead and glued down. I love die cutting snowflakes from glitter paper. Mm. Now I can add this panel to my glitter frame and it's not quite perfect in measurement. Like there's a little bit more on the sides than there is at the top and the bottom. That bothers me a lot, but for today, it's going to be fine. I'm going to let it go. It'll be okay. It's not very noticeable. And then I added my little skunks with their mugs. And now look at these embellishments, rainbow fish embellishments from Trinity Stamps. They look um, very much like iridescent. When you Think of like a bubble. When you see it turn in the light, you kind of get a rainbow or an oil slick. You kind of get a rainbow when you look at it in different lights. That's what iridescent is. And that's what these look like. So I added um, about five of those on my panel to finish it up with a little extra something something. Then on the back, I'm using some foam tape by Heffy Doodle. This is the best foam tape, y'all. It's extra thick and it's not sticky on the sides. Think about shaker cards when I say that. It is perfect for shaker cards. But I used it to kind of flatten out my panel and add it to my five by seven card base. So it's seven inches by 10 inches scored at five and that is an A7 size card. I'm totally loving this winter themed Valentine's card. I think it's a lot of fun and I love all the different textures and shine on these cards. Pairing the iridescent backgrounds with the glitter paper so delish. I have the Arteza products that I used today linked for you below, as well as a discount code if you want to shop. So check that out in the description box below. All the things I use that aren't Arteza are also linked for you below. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe because I have new videos all the time playing with paper crafting things like I did today. And if you missed the first video where I made the backgrounds, it's linked free below and you can go check that out now. I'll see you guys on the next one. Happy stamping. Bye.